know the tragic extent, extent, extent of my failings. Welcome back, viewers, to Darkest Dungeon. Last time, you know what, in fact, the last few times, things have gone really well, really smooth. So, of course, this time we're going to dramatically overstep our bounds, fight a boss, and get everybody killed. So this really, this is what the game is all about. Everything is building up to you taking on these bosses. We're going to take our, this is our level 2 crew right here. This is the four people that we're going to take to do battle with the, uh, the hag, I believe, is the one we've unlocked. So I'm going to upgrade all of the skills that we'll be using. Let me think. I don't particularly want to give him Sacrificial Stab because he'll be standing in the fourth row. Hands from the Abyss also doesn't work from there, really. Do I want to take Demon's Pull or Weakening Curse? I suppose we'll take Weakening Curse. <clears throat> For the final boss fight. Eh, yeah, whatever. It's only 250 gold. Let's upgrade them all. Uh, Dismas. You got a little bit of everything. We're, I think we're going to take... Uh, do I want him to be equipped with tracking shot? You know, I think I'm going to give him point blank shot uh, to use most of the dungeon, but we will upgrade tracking shot because I'll use it on the boss herself. Uh, let's upgrade your skills. Would we be better off bringing uppercut? Flashbang's not a bad skill either. All of his skills are at least somewhat useful, but the question is whether we ever want to rely on our bounty hunter to use his mark. His mark's not very powerful. You can see from the tooltip that it doesn't do anything aside from apply the mark status. So we might be better off having him bring four offensive skills and just let Bry get all our marks done. Also, I really didn't need to upgrade that, but 250 gold is pretty... Uh, Feels pretty trivial. We'll bring an upgraded flashbang. A single target stun with a pretty high accuracy. Or a pretty high base stun chance, rather. And of course, we'll... I am curious how this works exactly. So it looks like the stress heal from transforming back to a human goes up. But the stress inflicted by changing into beast mode doesn't. Get a little bit extra damage boost. Uh, this moves the Blight up by one point per round, which is impor uh, particularly important for this skill since it targets two people. That means a lot of extra damage. We are going to upgrade all of these. I just want to read what they actually do. Alright, so let's talk a little bit. I'm kind of fast-forwarding here because I'm excited to get to the boss fight, but let's talk a little bit. Uh, you can see that upgrading skills, and I talked about this a little bit when we unlocked the guild, upgrading skills doesn't actually increase their damage. Uh, you can see the base accuracy increases by 5%. That's pretty standard. Almost every skill in the game increases accuracy by 5 when you level it up. And special things about the skill, like the damage dealt by dots that it applies, or the chance that it has to inflict debuffs, or if it gives you prot, the amount of prot that it gives you, things like that go up. But, um... The actual damage output of our skills is only affected by the equipment that our heroes are carrying, and we'll upgrade that in just a moment at the blacksmith. Uh, you can see the uh, the debuff that this attack inflicts gets slightly stronger when we level it up. Okay. Sadly, uh, you can see that uh, further further levels are locked behind both hero resolve level and the level of instructor mastery that we've been able to purchase. This is pretty expensive. Uh, 1530 and it's going to rise sharply for ranks 3 and 4 as well. And here at the blacksmith we have not unlocked weaponsmithing but we do have the materials to do so. Uh, frankly weaponsmithing is just less important than armor smithing. You can see here, 4 HP, 5% dodge. That doesn't seem like very much. But on the 
hardier classes, it's more like 6% dodge and 7 HP. This is... Surviving is important. And now, if you've been watching the gold, uh, the gold counter in the lower left-hand corner, 5 and 5, not too bad, you may have noticed that we've spent an, uh, just a huge amount of money already. I am going to upgrade weaponsmithing. the flames. Mold the metal. We are raising an army. And so you can see the base damage number, which is referred to by skills. All skill, a lot of skills have a have a damage value on them that looks like uh, damage plus ten percent or damage minus forty percent. The base damage number for everything is affected by your weapon. So, a reasonable increase in damage, half a point of crit on all of his skills, no speed increase, but we'll give him that. Uh, Dismas also should get. New weapons, same increase. You'll notice that on Bry, it's slightly less important. First of all, we're going to be attacking with Bry less frequently, and when we do use his skills, both Weakening Curse and the Mark have such hefty damage penalties that they're going to reduce him to dealing like one or two damage anyway. So I'm not going to bother to spend money increasing his, uh, his attack. We will increase his attack, though. Cause, wow, look at that. It goes from eight to fourteen or seven to fourteen to eight to seventeen. Abomination's a very powerful guy. Alright, we spent a crazy amount of money. Uh, we just spent all of our deeds, so we can't afford to upgrade our stagecoach. It's fine. Uh I think we're ready. I think everything's done. Nobody in the party is super stressed. Nobody needs to go see uh, go see a priest or a bartender. Really, how different are those two things anyway? Alright, so. Boss missions. There are two different bosses in each area of the game. And there's a version of, those, of each boss for each level tier. You haven't yet seen it. Uh, but when the heroes hit level 3, the color of their little badge behind their level will change. There's uh, green tier missions, yellow tier missions. We've got one here. Uh, we've got one over here at the Warrens for some reason. Uh, requires level 3 heroes. Uh, I don't know if it requires level 3 heroes, but you should be at least level 3 when you go on these. They're quite a bit more difficult. And then there are red missions, which are level 5 plus. Uh, so, two two bosses per area, three versions of each boss, equals quite a lot of bosses. Really, this game is all about the boss fighting. We don't know, yet, what our final goal is going to be, but I think it's reasonable to assume that it's going to end with fighting some kind of horrible boss monster. Right? That's pretty reasonable. Pretty, uh, a pretty reasonable guess. <clears throat> so, when you fight a boss, uh, you will receive an orange trinket. There are multiple different rarities of trinkets and you can see uh, green level missions that have no camping in them give crappy gray trinkets. If you do a yellow mission or a green mission that is long enough to have one camp in it, you get a green trinket, which is just a higher quality of trinket. If you do a yellow mission that has camping in it or a red mission or a green mission that has two camps in it, I believe, you get a blue trinket, which is even better. Um, but every boss of every level always rewards an orange trinket, a very rare trinket. Very rare trinkets run the gamut from not impressive to extremely great, and I think Legendary Bracer is one of my favorites. Uh, and just plus 20% damage. No conditionals, you don't have to be fancy, it doesn't stop working if you get position switched. It's just, would you like to do 20% more damage? Of course I would. All right, let's gear up. I expect this to be very difficult, especially since we weren't actually able to upgrade to level two armor. Uh, but we'll see, I guess. Let's not be derailed by bringing too few shovels. All right, here we go. I 
had collected many rare and elusive volumes on ancient herbal properties and was set to enjoy several weeks immersed in comfortable study. My work was interrupted, however, by a singularly striking young woman who insisted on repeated calls to the house. So, uh, as I said before, there are three levels of each boss, and at each level you'll get a little bit more of the backstory uh, related to that boss and what happened to your ancestor and why, why whatever the boss is is still wandering the grounds. There is method in the wild corruption here. It bears a form both wretched and malevolent. Okay, I don't know if this is actually always the case, but it feels like it's always the case, so I'm going to pretend that it's always the case. Uh, every time I've done a boss mission, the boss has been in the room that is furthest from my starting position, so we're basically guaranteed the hag is right here. Uh, I did not remember to equip that sweet new trinket that we got from uh, from the last mission. That would probably have been a really good idea. <clears throat> Remember? Darkest Dungeon is a game that gives you the option of running away if things go south, and we will take it if we have to. I am not interested in losing a full party of level twos. Alright, let's break some stuff. Uh, sadly, these guys are... We'll just lay the stun on him, since this one's going to get crushed. Oh, I forgot to equip them. I forgot to equip the appropriate skills on everybody. I'm just doing a terrible job here. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yeah, well, overconfidence isn't going to get us because we're going to die to my incompetence far, far before that. Uh. Let's go ahead and put his stun on. It's good to have a stun available. And I do think that I want to drop Demon's Pull for Weakening Curse. Now, managing the condition of our heroes is a little bit different. Uh, we really want to be in good shape when we enter the boss's room which means that my uh, my habit of having my heroes run around at like 5% health uh, has to be I just have to change up my routines a little bit basically we are going to keep the light level high we are looking, we're looking to make camp before we fight the boss so that we can take advantage of the buffing skills that our party members have we want to go into the fight with the boss Low on stress, high on health, and carrying as many buffs as the party can muster. And a pretty easy dungeon so far, although we do have a, uh, a battle coming up ahead in the, the room after this next one. Dismas is almost completely de-stressed now. Take one of these keys that we just got. That is a pretty handy uh, little trinket, actually. I think we're going to go ahead and just put that on our on our werewolf right now. Our abomination, sorry. I keep calling him a werewolf. He's obviously a werewolf, although I guess the thing he turns into isn't exactly a wolf because it has big horns. He's a were he's a were goat. Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption, malformed with misintent. It is conceivable that we should have brought extra food. More food than I would normally bring on a one camp. I don't know. Ooh. Unfortunate crit. These dogs have pretty high speed. We prefer aggressive action to defensive action, of course, as in all cases. Uh, now the real question is... 
His blight skill is going to do. It does uh, zero damage. Three blight for three. Three points of blight per turn for three rounds. Do I want to do that, or do I just want to go uh, wolf form? Goat form. Sorry. Yeah. We'll just transform. And we'll rake the front row because rake is incredibly powerful. Disadvantage. Give them no quarter. And then Dismas. Ah. I was hoping that we might be able to dispatch that last dog before it actually got an attack off. Oh, Dismas gets dodged. As the fiend falls. Sadly, the fact that these uh, dogs don't leave corpses means that we are lo we've lost our great attack to the fact that nobody can stay in the back row. Their formation is broken. But the dog was so crippled. The offensive. Resist the bleed. Oh. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. All right, good, and that heal will put him. Uh, Put him in a position where he's not in very great danger. Uh, do I want to open this up with a shovel? So we got quite a bit of combat ahead. There's only two hallways left where we might need a shovel. We could always just come back. I think we're going to go ahead and shovel this. Uh, the coffin's slightly ajar. Is a shovel useful in that case? I guess we'll find out. Nope. Okay, the shovel doesn't doesn't do anything to these ones that are slightly ajar. Fine. That's good to know. Even if it is a shame to waste a shovel. Remember, we're not just interested in the outcome of the current mission. We're interested in improving the outcomes of all future missions. Knowledge is a good way to do that. Yes, I know. Everything is very red. These guys need a lot of, like, constant reassurance, I feel like. The game is just laying torches all over us. Uh, do I want to take this opportunity to heal in the hopes of getting a crit? Yeah, I think so. No crit, just a little bit of healing. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, I would... Point Blank Shot is guaranteed to kill if it hits. But Open Vein is very likely to... And I really do want to keep my Abomination in the second slot. Because I don't want to have to transform him to have him uh, contribute to this battle. Okay, well that was easy. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Got another battle in here. Then another battle in the next hallway. Oh good, surprise. I wish that uh, it was likely for our Abomination to go before Dismas sometimes. His speed is 5. He should theoretically win initiative over Dismas. Uh, not even that rarely. Well, get lucky. Alright, that was pretty lucky. The reason I want him to go first is so that he can transform and do that headbutt that moves him forward. Allowing Dismas to just do a pistol shot on one of these back uh, enemies. Because I don't actually like having these guys... Uh, you know, this seems like a good time to use our stun, actually. It's not the shovel, the shuffle that I was hoping for, I'll tell you that. I really wish that uh, the Eldritch Tentacles had not missed. Yeah, because that would have been a kill. Well, that's unfortunate. We are going to be subjected to a high-stress attack here. We did what we could to avoid it. The Grape Shot Blast will kill her if it hits. It is 5% less likely to hit. Given that it would only be doing damage to one other target, I think we're actually going to go for the pistol shot. A decisive pummeling. Ah, uh, sure. Just hit her. 
Well, we're well on our way to uh, undoing a tiny, tiny portion of the stress damage. You know, given that she's already taken her turn, I'm going to stun this guy instead in the hopes that our abomination will finish her off. Alright. Doing things that way prevented his attack for the turn, whereas if I had done things in the other order, I'm not confident that the Abomination would have one-shot him. It could happen, certainly, but I'm not confident enough that it would. Alright, buddy. Open a vein. Okay, easy. Nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. And hey, look, we got our shovel back. Okay, this time nobody has uh, CTO mania. And that's what happens when you use medicinal herbs on a monster carcass. Just a big pile of food. Wow, that's quite a lot of money. And maggots. This is not a uh, this is not a terribly intimidating fight. We're not going to point blank shot here because I want to keep the abomination in the second row for these easy fights. Let him do what he does best. Well, let him do what he does best that doesn't involve transforming into a horrible monster. Uh, we might be able to kill this thing. We failed. Wow, our abomination speed is supposed to be pretty high, isn't it? Five, yeah. He really does seem to go last basically all the time. Finish this thing off since it uh, has yet to take a turn. We'll prevent it from ever getting one. Hey, Dismas. No, no stress. Re no stress release. Release. Heal. No stress. Heal. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? All right, Wayne. Take it down a notch. Honestly, I do kind of love that that particular line, though. It's so it's so ridiculously overwrought. I'm taking it easy on the light here. Uh, maybe this is unreasonable, but I feel like things are going really well, and so I'm uh, I'm gambling a little bit with the difficulty of the encounters in the hopes of getting better loot. We are definitely not getting punished on the difficulty of our encounters. Be wary. Triumph oh, no. precipitates a dizzying fall. His plutomania caused him to not think about the fact that the chest could be trapped. And now, because of your stupid negative event, we don't get a ton of loot. What a jerk. Alright, we are going to camp at the end of this battle. I have uh All right. point blank shot is pretty much guaranteed to get us there. I shouldn't say pretty much guaranteed. These guys do have quite a bit of dodge. The end approaches. I don't think things are all quite as bad as the uh as our buddy Wade seems to. Uh, this wouldn't be anywhere near lethal. I think I'm just going to heal him, both as a security measure. I'm just a little nervous about him getting gibbed next turn. And also, you know, a little bit of stress relief, should it happen, would be cool. Yeah, it's worth transforming. We're about to relieve a, we're about to relieve a fair amount of stress through camping, so... Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, he is not guaranteed a kill on the healthy dog, so we'll just go ahead and take down one of the injured ones. 
Obviously, if his attack did enough damage to guarantee a kill on the healthy dog, it would be better to strike the healthy dog down uh, so that we would be able to use softer attacks on the remaining dogs in the next round. You're always trying to optimize your current and future action economy. Again, no crit heals. We'll keep trying. It's the same reason the Grape Shop Blast is better than a uh, single attack if the Grape Shop Blast is guaranteed to get a kill. Ooh. He does have quite a bit of dodge. <laughs> the dodge sprite for the beast form is kind of adorably terrified. A trifling victory, but a victory nonetheless. That's unfortunate, especially since we're about to uh, expend our firewood, and we will have a we will have an open slot for you in a moment. But it looks like we're not going to need this holy water, so we'll just do that. Uh, actually, I probably should have waited until after the camp for this, for the same reasons. Fortunately, we got stuff that slots nicely into the stuff that we already have. Uh, I am going to set our party in this order and leave him with point blank shot equipped until after we camp just in case we get ambushed at night during the camping event. Gathered close in tenuous firelight an uneasy companionship. Alright. So we're really focusing on buffs here. Uh, the hag is size 2, so plan to take down is quite powerful. We can give somebody plus 20% damage for 2 time units. We would like to pull a little bit of stress uh, down. We definitely want to clean guns. Let's see, what else needs doing? If we do this, we'll have three time units left. Which will be just enough for one... Uh, for one encourage, and then we'll have a wasted time unit, I guess. Oh no, we can do an Abandoned Hope. Which is slightly... Yeah, okay. So we'll Abandoned Hope. Then we will... Yeah, that's a, a lovely sentiment. Then we'll increase his stress to increase the Lycanthrope's damage. And this way we have some... Uh, we have our damage buffs distributed across our party. That's important because I know due to previously dealing with the hag that the hag has uh, the way the hag fights is that she keeps one of your party members incapacitated pretty much all the time so it's important to spread out your buffs yeah we're favorite look at that oh no closes in haunting the hearts of men. okay well as far as ambushes go though this is pretty soft uh, we'll have have the occultists bounce back and now everybody's in fighting position we really only lost one move there uh, let's go ahead and kill these guys before they can get turns wherever possible honestly I'm not going to transform into this dog we'll just remove nine stress uh We'll heal you in the hopes of getting a crit. Nope, no crit. I'm just gonna um, have him eat four food. We are really high on food. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. All right, and we get our scout. And indeed, the boss. We brought enough shovels that we could uh, waste one and still get through, even if the extra one hadn't dropped. That's good. We are definitely going in here with full light. We are changing his skills. I remembered. Look, everybody, look what a good job I'm doing. Do we want to mess with anybody else's skills? She might be stun immune. I don't remember. Ah, we'll leave this. We'll leave this on, just in case she isn't. Uh, you have your mark. Yeah, everything's good. His skills aren't even changeable. I don't know why I looked. Here we go. 
a slathering testament to the powers of corruption. So, as you can see, she has, uh... Oh, I didn't change his skills correctly. I was supposed to leave... I was supposed to take off Point Blank Shot and put on Tracking Shot. Instead, I took off Open Vein. Well, let's hope that doesn't bite us in the ass. It, you know, it might. Uh, so she gets two turns. We're just gonna try to race her down, basically. Do as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible. Mark her. And this is what I was talking about. Now he's in the pot. Definitely be smart. So there's a couple of different strategies here. You can... Uh, the person in the pot will take constant damage, and while they're in the pot, she gains a couple of other abilities. Uh, like the ability to taste the stew, which deals damage to the party and heals her. So, what you can do is attack the pot. Attacking the pot enough... You can see it has 14 uh, health. Attacking the pot enough will knock the person out of the pot. You won't actually kill the pot, but it'll knock the person out of the pot. Give you the ability to heal them up, and then on her next turn she's going to shove somebody else in the pot. Uh, so you can keep cycling people out of the pot and trying to heal them up uh, and to prevent her from using her Taste the Stew ability, or you can just damage race, deal 60 damage to her before it matters that this guy's in the pot, and I think that's what we're going to go for here. As silly as that sounds. Jesus. It's starting to sound a little bit less silly, isn't it? Oh no, you've been lightly seasoned. Y you know what, Dismas? Well, don't worry about it, guy. We got it. Oh, you know what? I don't know why I brought the mark. His ability that uh, affects marked people actually can't even hit her. Well, now I feel like a fool. And her stun resistance is quite high. So, we're going to get 9 to 17 damage out of this. A hook and slice would deal 2 to 3 damage plus 9 damage, because we're almost guaranteed to get 3 rounds of combat against her. It really is better to just use finish him. Although, in this case, it should be finish her. And, of course, it has a higher crit rate and a, a really satisfying critical effect. Uh, yeah, let's just keep laying it on her. It does look like we're going to be able to race her down pretty trivially. Minus 25% damage. That's a real shame. It's uh, almost almost completely offset by the buff we used in camp. But it probably has bought her uh, another turn here. Resist the debuff? Yeah. Ah, let's just keep hitting her. Oh. There was a small chance that he could have just killed her right there. Dismas had a lot of health before he went into the pot. The fact that he's taking two damage every time anyone does anything is not, uh... I'm not worried. Alright, finish her off. Fewer people, wait. Wow, that's really disappointing. Uh, oftentimes, defeating a boss awards you with all kinds of great stuff. We got two really very mediocre trinkets. We're going to continue adventuring for now. Uh, where are we at here? We're in pretty good spirits. Dismas can certainly use a heal. Uh, let's fix his skills. We'll go back to that. We have a lot of food. Do we want to walk all the way back here for the chance that's a little bit of extra loot? Nah, never mind. If it wasn't so very many rooms away, I would have done it. So lots of extra supplies. You can see a little bit wasteful there. Uh, we do come out of the mission with over 10,000 gold, just in gold, plus the trinkets we got that we're li somewhat likely to sell. Uh, quite a few deeds, and it's hard to put a price on a legendary bracer. I mean, there's that merchant in town who would who would do that trivially, but what I mean to say is that it's hard to put a price on the opportunity to pick up a legendary bracer. Okay, so that's largely irrelevant. That's good, not great. Uh, that's not really a thing. That's not a big deal. He picked up Vertigo for some reason. 
Also, vertigo is a disease, not a... That's a little strange. Uh, robust is not a big deal. He picked up a disease resistance buff at the same time as a disease. And Hyromania can be a little bit annoying. These, uh, these negative quirks that compel your heroes to do stuff are really the only ones that I think are at all dangerous. Curiosity, interest, and obsession. Mile markers on my road to damnation. Oh, well, okay, we'll take that under advisement there. I, I do believe we have what it takes to upgrade our barracks. More arrive, foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain of the damned. Alright, we're very close to having a uh, the max roster size of 25. Do we have a man-at-arms yet? I don't think we do. Okay, well. The raw strength of youth may be spent, but his eyes hold the secrets of a hundred campaigns. We're just going to recruit to fill up, even though I don't think we particularly need uh, all of the things that we're recruiting here. Alright, these guys did get a little bit too stressed. I'm going to go ahead and de-stress them. I don't really think it's necessary, though, honestly. We could leave... Oh, does he only... Right, he only wants to drink. What about you, Fitz? You won't meditate. Uh, well, maybe we could both go drinking. Nope, I haven't upgraded the tavern very enough to have us both go drinking. Well, Mentel will go drinking. And Fitz can go pray, I guess. Yeah, we have prayer pretty upgraded, right? Yeah. I'm not too worried about the vertigo. Um, he's versatile enough that his position isn't so important. Uh, he's viable in the first two slots naturally, and then in the third slot he has the ability to move forward with that headbutt attack, so... Man, I almost wonder if it feels like we maybe accidentally put the game on easy? Something. Something ain't right. This is going, this is going too smoothly. The darkest tambourine. His Stygian jingle jangles bring fear to the hearts of men. Alright, well, things continue to go uh, swimmingly, really. Still, only one, uh, only one hero lost, and lost in such a stupid way. Alright, well, I guess come back next time when we will continue to uh, do suspiciously well.